Uh, greetings, comrades. We hope you are okay wherever you are. We had promised that you are going to do a brief uh, analysis on developments in, in Zambia. As you know that Zambia has gone to the IMF, I think this will be for the fourth time. Uh, a social commentator, Grave Chelwa, has made a brief analysis on uh, the conditions that have been placed by the IMF uh, to Zambia. You know that Zambia, under the founding father of the nation, Kenneth Kaunda, in the 1980s, went to the IMF uh, to borrow money. We know how it ended. Um, like any other country that uh, did so, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and others, uh, and uh, the structural adjustment program <clears throat> implemented then in Zambia did not work out, as we have seen in other countries. There are many social commentators who have done uh, studies on the failures of the IMF and the World Bank programs around, around the continent. Uh, uh, when Chiluba, the late Federal Chiluba, became president in the early 90s, he also went the IMF route and uh, we also know uh, what happened. And uh, when uh, Chiluba was no longer president and Lev Manawasa became president, he went through the IMF route as well and the World Bank. And uh, the results have always been the same <clears throat> in that the people of Zambia do not benefit from the programs, but to, uh, foreign companies Western companies, uh, to quote the leader of the Zambian Socialist Party and South African capital, benefit from these uh, programs in Zambia. Uh, we will uh, uh, try our level best to get the comrades in Zambia to have a, a, a detailed discussion on the issues that are happening in Zambia. Of course, we know, I have seen since the current president, President H. H. K. came into power, he has inspired uh, many Zimbabweans, I might say. Firstly, they are inspired by the manner in which the youth of Zambia participated uh, in the elections that uh, resulted in the electoral victory of President H. H. We are told, once re recorded a video as well, that the Kwacha uh, is gaining strength against the, the RAND and other currencies in the region. And they were being told uh, that uh, the economy of Zambia is growing and uh, uh, the leadership style of HH is being used as some kind of a model for others uh, to follow or to copy, whatever the case might be. And others are indeed inspired and they think that uh, or they wish that uh, the Zimbabwean youth must do what the Zambian youth did uh, in, in the last election, and, and uh, that uh, the political leadership that will then emerge if uh, there is change of government in Zimbabwe must follow in the footsteps of uh, President H. H. So when, when you study uh, what has been posted on social media, <clears throat> Uh, you will think that uh, the material conditions of the people uh, uh, on the ground has improved, that uh, uh, people are now living well in Zambia, that uh, uh, in the few months or so that uh, President H. H. has been in power, has been able to pull out uh, people of Zambia uh, from the working class communities in the villages, pull them out of poverty. Uh, 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 that, that is the narrative that is out there, which, which of course uh, is not correct. Uh, we will get uh, Congress to do a detailed analysis on what is happening in Zambia. But we want just to look briefly, uh, 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 since this is our first series in focusing on Zambia, uh, a brief analysis by Griff Chelwa, the social commentator. Uh, there is a, a full document which you can cook in. Uh, uh, on Zambia and the IMF, the agreement. Uh, uh, so uh, our comrade Griff Chelwa, a social co commentator, says, I quote, 
Uh, the centerpiece of the deal is that the IMF is targeting, in their words, a large front-loaded and a sustained fiscal consolidation. Specifically, they want the fiscal deficit to decline from 6% of GDP in 2021 to a surplus of 3.2% of GDP by 2025. And uh, this is likely to be achieved by drastic cuts in government spending over the period 2022 to 2025. Basically, the IMF wants uh, our government to reduce expenditures in the billions of dollars between now and uh, 2025. Close quote, and he concludes by saying this is the definition of austerity. Uh, 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 what is hap likely is, or what is happening in, in Zambia. Uh, he then gave this uh, 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 analysis. Um, my system is playing with me here. Uh, he, then, he then gives this uh, analysis uh, uh, in terms of the reduction, how this reduction in the fiscal deficit is going to be achieved. Uh, uh, he says that one, I quote, fuel subsidies are going to be fully eliminated by the end of this month, that is end of September 2022. Uh, you know, uh, close quote, you know what it means to eliminate fuel subsidies. Uh, governments must provide subsidies because if you then eliminate fuel subsidies, uh, it means that uh, a motorist will not be protected from the high cost of fuel. And uh, this is going to be passed from ordinary Zambians. Uh, and it is going to have a huge impact uh, 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 on the economy and uh, on the people of Zambia, particularly the working class and peasants. Uh, two, he says, I quote, electricity tariffs will have to increase. And the IMF wants the Zambian government to publish a plan for doing this by December 2022. A close quote. Um, we recorded a video when we were analyzing ESCOM, ZESA, talking about electricity challenges in South Africa and Zimbabwe. Uh, uh, and uh, if, uh, as directed by IMF, electricity tariffs uh, are to increase, uh, it means many in Zambia will not afford to pay for electricity. The third point that he raises in his analysis, he says, I quote, the hugely successful farmer input support program will be reformed. That is reformed beginning farming season 2023-2024. Uh, this reform, uh, uh, he says, is I must speak for drastic cuts in this instance, the FZ the cuts are large, large between now and 2025. And he says, I continue quoting my heart, please, for the hundreds of thousands of small-scale farmers who have largely made our country mess secure over the last two decades. Close quote. You remember in the video that you recorded when we spoke about an increase in trade between uh, Zimbabwe and Zambia, we're looking at uh, the cross-border traders that uh, uh, around Victoria Falls that are going to Zambia to buy milling. Uh, 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 we have our own food shortages in Zimbabwe uh, uh, and uh, Zambia has been in the last few years supplying us with the maize. Our people have been crossing to Zambia uh, to buy maize meal and uh, this uh, is going to affect uh, the the farmer input support program, which has benefited lots of uh, small-scale farmers uh, in, 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 in Zambia. Uh, uh, he raises the third point here. He says, value added tax. The IMF wants us to broaden our, our vet base, which essentially means limiting the number of goods that are vet exempt. The vet is one of the most regressive taxes in the world because it impacts the poor much more than the well-off. Because of this, governments often exempt many products from VET to protect the poor. The IMF now wants us to do the reverse and, and do so in quite a drastic way. Uh, uh, he then analyzes a table which is there uh, uh, in, in, the, in, the, 
in the uh, document that uh, Zambians and the government of Zambia and uh, uh, the IMF has signed. So this is a brief analysis uh, 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 on what is happening in Zambia is an introduction, but we will have comrades from Zambia uh, who will give us a detailed analysis on what is happening in Zambia, uh, the IMF loan and, and, and uh, the previous structural adjustment programs in, in Zambia who, on who has benefited because uh, our stat will show that uh, ordinary Zambians uh, have not benefited. Uh, it is foreign uh, companies that uh, benefit uh, from, from uh, this. So we want to hear your views. We know we've got Zimbabweans that are based in Zambia. Uh, we want to hear your views on what is happening in Zambia as we begin this series of looking into Zambia. And, and we know that uh, our main opposition party in Zimbabwe is inspired by Zambians. And as communists who are saying we need to build an economy that is free from imperialist influence. Uh, we reject the IMF and uh, we do not think that uh, uh, IMF will lead to economic growth. In, uh, in, in fact, uh, the IMF programs as uh, seen in the past have impoverished our people and our communities. Uh, but we want to hear you from you uh, if, if you are based in Zambia on what is happening in Zambia. Yes, as we are saying that uh, the culture is stronger uh, but uh, uh, if production is going to be affected, as uh, this short analysis show, uh, where small-scale farmers are going to be hugely affected, uh, it means uh, uh, the gains that will have been made uh, in Zambia are going to be reversed. And uh, we know how this is going to end. Uh, uh, the workers are going to suffer, uh, peasants are going to suffer in Zambia and uh, we can certainly predict what is going to happen. Uh, uh, but please share your views right in the comment section, and uh, please like this video, circulate to your contacts uh, uh, as we continue to engage on this important discussion, and uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Otherwise, I'm Andrew Comrades.